Hi, how are you? Can you hear me okay, by the way? Can I, everyone hear me well? Sorry for the honking. I am back in my apartment in Brooklyn and um, I just live on a pretty busy street. So that's that. Um, can everyone hear me fine or just want to know before I get started, I suppose. I'm assuming so. Um, okay, so today, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about hosting lunch at home. Um, food is, okay, so a little background on me, I suppose. Uh, my family comes from Croatia and basically, you know, growing up, uh, food has just been the center of like every single one of our gatherings. Um, whenever we'd go back home to Croatia, um, you know, ev everyone like calls you over to host you and is always like, come over for a meal, right? And they create this entire, just, I mean, there are so many dishes and everything. Hello. Uh, and so, yeah, basically, I don't know, food has kind of just been in my life forever as something that I guess brings people together. Um, and it's something to be like enjoyed in a super romantic way. Um, and yeah, I think that that, I think that's, that should be everyone's experience of food because you know, it literally feeds you and fuels you. So why not have fun with it? Right. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know, I guess like one of the ways I show love is by feeding people and hosting people. And so I'm so excited to be talking about this this week, uh, for that. Um, and yeah, I'm basically just going to be going over, um, ways that, you know, i like or I guess recipes that I use when I'm, you know, because when you're serving lunch, you're not necessarily creating this entire full on like stews and pastas and da da da. da. Um, it's kind of like a light bite in a sense because it is lunch. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm going to be talking about like my favorite recipes. Uh, and I'm going to be going over these uh, products that. I think would pretty much make the process just super seamless uh, and fun as well. So, uh, you know, one of my favorite recipes, I know I just said pasta as like not a lunch thing, but pasta can be a lunch thing, right? I mean, as long as you're making a nice light pasta, uh, you know, you're not making like an entire bolognese <laughs> ragu type situation uh one of my favorite things to make is i suppose pasta with you know cherry tomatoes basil garlic and olive oil it's like it literally takes maybe 15 minutes to cook um and it's nice because you know it really just hits all of the food group people in your life you know you can feed vegans with it you can use gluten-free pasta if you you know are serving someone or you yourself have a gluten intolerance um and it's really simple you basically just chop up cherry tomatoes throw them into a skillet with olive oil and garlic um kind of get them to a point where they're a little blistered um and then add basil inside, get the basil to wilt a bit. Uh, and then while you're cooking that, you have your pasta water going, boiling your pasta. Um, and then, yeah, after that, you kind of just like transport the pasta into the tomato basil pan, add a little bit of pasta water inside. I like to also add Parmesan cheese inside for more richness, uh, throw it together and you now have a meal that tastes as if you kind of spent a few hours on it, but you know, it, it was 15 minutes. Uh, so for that, 
um, it's a perfect segue into my first product. So um, I'm going to be talking about the Casafina Tower Mina Pasta Bowl. So pasta bowls are great. So I, in terms of just my life, um, especially with my apartment and like interior design, all that stuff, um, I really enjoy minimalism and, you know, not just minimalism in terms of like, oh, like everything's tucked away and it looks nice and clean and that's great. Like I actually truly love having like as few goods as possible, right? Um, and so I think when it comes to, you know, having plates, well, obviously you should have like multiple size plates and like all that stuff. But um, I think like the most versatile plate is a pasta bowl, a nice shallow kind of wide pasta bowl because especially when you're serving lunch you can serve anything in that you can serve like pasta obviously um you can serve salads in that it's such a great bowl because it's just that nice shallow depth I suppose but it's still wide so you know it'll hold any type salad you make um it'll hold things like you know, rice and curry, if you make soups as well, that, like, there are so many things that you can serve in a pasta bowl. So um, if you are a person who definitely, like me, is kind of just into having one thing that can do 10,000 things, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, getting pasta bowls. Also, it, I mean, when you're serving, so I, like, have been, I don't know, I've just been around chefs and restaurants, like, my entire life. Um, I have lots of family members who have been chefs and, you know, friends as well. Uh, and, you know, one of, like, the best plating tips that I've ever received was, like, you have to have your food kind of looks small on a plate, if that makes sense. So, you know, if you are serving something and you're serving it on a dish that big, but the food is that big, it's going to look a little messy. Like it's not going to look very nice and plated. Uh, you know, if your food is kind of just hitting every single corner of the plate itself, um, what I would recommend is essentially just, you know, using a bowl like this where it's kind of, it's really wide. And so that width, right? When your food is just like kind of in the center, it looks like a little tiny thing with lots of empty space around it. It looks beautiful. And like, not only are you going to be serving food that tastes great, but it also just looks good on the plate. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that's another tip that I've got up my sleeve, I suppose. But yeah, anyway, this plate is amazing. I definitely uh, would recommend it for literally, like whatever you serve, it will look very good in this bowl. Um, next, uh, in terms of, I suppose, making things look pretty for the table. So, I'm, I'm talking about uh, tea towels. So these towels are cotton, meaning that, you know, they're easily washable. They um, are, they're essentially cotton fabric napkins. And, you know, I don't know, I, I feel like growing up, it's always been a thing of, yeah, well, you kind of just have fabric napkins during special occasions you know, you put them in the little napkin ring and that's it. It's just for holidays, special occasions, that's it. But honestly, cotton <laughs> towels, like I use them every single day uh, because one, like, I don't know, I'm an earth sign, I'm a Capricorn. And so I 
I, I don't know if this speaks to you at all, like if you follow astrology, but I do. And um, I don't know, I feel like I like for things to look very pretty when I'm doing them. And so first off, cotton towels, they just look so much better than paper towels or paper napkins. Um, that's just it. But also the thing is that why I use them every single day is that they are so much more sustainable than, you know, paper napkins or paper towels. Like you basically throw, what I do is I buy many cotton towels. So I'll buy like 12 to 20 just once. I just buy it one time. And then I have that for like an entire year. And first off, you're saving so much money on paper towels because you're just not using them while you're eating. Also, like you can wash them. Uh, whatever stains gets onto them, I mean, they typically come out very easily. Uh, and I mean, if you're doing your laundry anyway, you may as well just throw this in. Um, and yeah, it's just like, it's just smart to use cotton towels because they just essentially cut down on your carbon footprint, which is amazing, but also it looks great. So, you know, when you do have guests over, they go to your table and it's like, oh, cool. Like my silverware is sitting on top of a cotton towel. Like there are not, not towel, napkin, but, um, you know, it's, it, it just is something that I think that everyone should do. I am a huge advocate for it. Um, and yeah, I mean, what better way than, to start with these guys like they're super cute and they basically just go with any sort of interior design I that's another thing I would recommend um I mean unless your style is to be you know very specific um in terms of you know how something looks uh I would probably just stick with neutrals because you know if, if you buy like 20 Christmas patterned or New Year's Eve patterned uh, cotton towels or napkins, uh, you're going to be kind of stuck with that the entire year. So I would definitely recommend a neutral color so that it could go with all seasons and a neutral pattern as well so that you're not stuck uh, using holiday stuff every day, which again, like if that's your personal style, that's fine. Like do it. If that literally puts a smile on your face every day, thank goodness, you know? Um, but yeah, that's what I would recommend. Uh, in terms of, I guess, silverware, I'm going to be skipping over a few products and presenting to you these, uh, Cote, basically just stainless steel uh, flatware sets. So this is the price I believe for just one fork. Uh, so if you do go into the product, they do have like spoons and knives as well. Um, but, you know, obviously with food, correct? <sighs> like uh, I think that hosting people, obviously you should you know, have everything taste good because that's the main event, the meal, correct? Uh, but I also truly believe that like, it has to be a sensory experience. It has to be like, it, or I mean, I guess uh, this is what I prefer. Like I prefer kind of presenting like just beautiful food on beautiful things. And that's essentially that. So you know, in terms of sensory experiences, like make a cool playlist that isn't too distracting, but it still like gets the vibe going. Um, you know, have beautiful plateware, beautiful, you know, like cotton napkins. That's amazing. 
Um, you can have candles going, you can have a diffuser going. Um, and then, you know, that is all like sensory, right? Like they're listening to great music, they're smelling great scents, they're like seeing beautiful things. But you know, one of the senses that you don't really use with food unless you're eating like finger foods is you don't feel the food. Does that make sense? Um, because typically you don't eat with your hands with most dishes. Uh, and so what I like, I don't know. I'm just one of those people that I kind of like put, I pay attention to every little detail. And so like when I'm holding good silverware, like nice, heavy silverware that just looks good as well, it like, it makes the entire experience better because it like, it's such a simple little change, but it makes everything feel so much more luxe. And like, you know, it just creates this entire experience. It's like that one tiny little detail that just truly turns, you know, the guest experience from like, okay, cool, that was a lunch to like, oh my God, whoa, like, even your forks are nice. Like what? This is amazing. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's what I have about <laughs> silverware. Uh, those are my four minutes dedicated to silverware, but um, yeah, I don't know. Has everyone, anyone ever like, this sounds so weird, but picked up a fork and been like, wow, this fork is beautiful. Like, oh my God, amazing. Um, it just makes everything, I don't know, kind of nicer. Uh, it's a little tiny detail, but I think it works. Um, okay. And then the last part of, I guess, the guest experience that I have to show to you guys today are these beautiful organic glasses. So it's by Hawkins, New York. Um, so obviously, you know, when you are hosting lunch, um, you're not necessarily, I guess, you know, there aren't many glasses on the table. You know, there isn't like a water glass and a champagne flute and a wine glass and, you know, possibly like something for high bulk cocktails or sodas or anything like that. Um, typically it's just one glass, right? Maybe two, maybe, you know, you're having wine and then you have a water glass as well. But, um, basically, as I was saying before with pasta bowls, you know, how they're super versatile, um, how they're like a really good tool to have for lunch because they're so versatile. Um, I'm so sorry, by the way, there's siren <laughs> outside. Um, but that's essentially that, um, yeah. So essentially, uh, with these glasses specifically, they're shaped in a way that you can kind of serve like anything in them because they're not, you know, they're essentially stemless wine glasses. So obviously you can serve wine in them, but because of the fact that they're stemless, you can kind of like, if you make a really great juice, you can serve that. You can have that be your water glass. You can serve a nice little cocktail that you make and, you know, throw a huge ice cube in there and kind of just serve it that way. And it just looks beautiful because also the organic glass, it kind of gives it like a nice little, uh, I guess, like, rugged look on top. It's not a straight rim, which is really nice. Um, you know, it just looks beautiful, but again, you can do so many things with it. So, uh, that I guess is the last part of the guest experience, uh, that I have to offer to you in terms of, uh, you know, things that you can use to help facilitate that. But, yeah, now we are going to go on to serving stuff. So I have this beautiful Casafina Pacifica oval, pl oval platter. Um, and again, 
why am I talking about this? Because it's versatile. Like you can do many things with this. Um, obviously, you know, if you are serving a lunch where you are kind of like, I want to serve everything on their own platters, you know, and have it be very like family style and have it look super, um, you know, kind of swanky, I guess. Uh, you can definitely use this platter as like one of your serving platters. But um, what's also cool is that it is oval and it's pretty long. And so, you know, if it is like a friend who I guess doesn't really care, it's like just serve everything on one plate. Oval platters are amazing for that because they still make the food look good in terms of presentation, but you can kind of just like serve one part of the meal on one part of this platter and then serve the other part on the other, other part of the meal on the other part of the platter. Um, and yeah, I definitely like, I wholeheartedly endorse longer platters just for that reason um just because you know you can you can be super fancy and like only serve a few pieces of crudo beautifully laid out and that's that but you can also kind of just shove a bunch of things on there if that makes sense and still have it look pretty so yeah that's what I recommend and then also um, another presentation thing. Uh, I mean, this serving set is beautiful. So it is a matte gold serving set. Um, and it comes with, you know, a little spork and a spoon. Um, and again, one of the things that, you know, I was talking about the silverware earlier. Um, it's nice to just hold pretty things when you're hosting people. Um, and, have things look pretty like have pretty much every detail look pretty um and yeah I think that this is amazing so it kind of has like a nice brushed metal look to it um and so like it just looks great when you're using it but also it's nice because the ends are pretty round meaning that you know they hold a lot. And I don't know, that's like one thing that I also like is the fact that, you know, things can be pretty and they can be functional as well. And there's nothing worse than something that like looks pretty, but you know, if these spoons were like this big, it's like, okay, great. This looks great, but I'm, it's taking me like five minutes to take all the food that I want onto my plate. So uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend this. This is great for salads. It's great for pastas. Um, but also, I mean, you don't have to use them together if you do find that you're making something like a curry or, you know, like kind of like a beany thing, I suppose, like a chickpea type situation. Um, you can definitely like chip your lentils. You could definitely just use one of the spoons and then, you know, use like the spork for something else. So that's that. Um, and then the last thing that I have to present, which I think that, I think that this should just be in like everyone's arsenal, whether you are serving lunch or you're not, um, you should definitely own this. It is a small marble cutting board. Um, and the reason why is that, you know, obviously when you are serving lunch, uh, lunch is not that big of a meal, right? Like lunch is typically kind of snack-like. It's like an elevated snack, if you will. Um, and so obviously when you're making charcuterie boards, um, you know, typically when you're making charcuterie boards, you're using a cutting board like this big, 
Um, and you're putting absolutely everything on it, like dried meats, cheeses, nuts, jams, fruits, all this stuff. Um, but, you know, when it's just maybe, you know, you're serving just yourself and another person or you're serving yourself and like two people, um, you don't need a board this big. Um, and even if like, honestly, even if you're serving just yourself, which I've totally done before, I've totally like just made a charcuterie board for myself because you should, you know, like you should enjoy food um, and like enjoy how beautiful it can be. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, you don't need this huge, huge board for just a few people. And so this is great because, you know, obviously it gives you the small space that you need to like serve your cheese, your dried meat, um, you know, fruits, all that stuff. But it also just looks amazing on the table. This color, like in terms of all the other you know, food, or no, not foods, uh, products that I showed you, you know, they're all very like tan beige camel colored, which is very in right now, but you do need some contrast. And I think adding in like this kind of like deep green gray, uh, marble cutting board, like it'll just look beautiful, even if there's no food on it. Like when it's around all the other things that I mentioned today. Um, yeah, and it's great because, you know, you can really serve anything on cutting boards. And even if you need to use it, you can use it as well. Like if you're just chopping up tiny little cherry tomatoes and you don't really need, uh, you know, that much space or you don't want to like dirty your huge cutting board, you can definitely use this just to like, chop small things and it's it's beautiful I definitely would recommend small cutting boards just you know even even if you're serving yourself like breakfast in the morning and you're having like just a tiny little bit of cheese and ham on bread or something like that um you can serve it on that and like I don't know, like having nice things in your vicinity just makes it better, right? Um, I don't know. That's that's just how I feel, obviously. If you don't feel that way, um, that's fine as well. But yeah, I would definitely uh, recommend that. And it's also nice because I, obviously, you know, when you are serving meat and cheese, you're not necessarily like eating other food yet it's kind of like an appetizer so um it's nice talking piece as well kind of just like wow this looks beautiful and it's a marble cutting board so yeah that's pretty much it in terms of that um I don't know I guess it what what questions do you guys have about hosting a great lunch I would say like one of my absolute, you know, number one tips with serving any food at all is just like have as many drink options as you possibly can. Um, I don't know. I feel like, do you know how celebrities have like so many different types of drinks just in their fridge? You're like, do you? even eat food like why are there 10 million Fiji water bottles and Red Bulls in your fridge right now um I think when you do have guests it's good to you know because they they don't have the option to like say yes or no to what you're serving them in terms of food like they kind of have to eat it because you're making it correct but I don't know I feel like giving people you know, as much of a nice sensory experience, many options as possible uh, is really amazing. So definitely always have like, you know, water on hand, maybe juices for people. But I mean, it's the middle of the day, it's lunchtime. So who's really drinking that much, right? 
uh, if you are of age, obviously. Uh, some juices, some nice sparkling waters, uh, teas. I would definitely recommend uh, obviously wine as well. You know, why not? If you're eating with people, you can be very French about it and drink wine in the middle of the day. Um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely it. Cause I mean, it, it just, it just gives them more options than they, you know, thought that well, because they don't really have options otherwise. So at least they could choose, you know, what they'll be sipping on. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That is the one recipe. I had so many other recipes like in my head to talk about. And then I was like, I have to get through these products. So I only spoke about the uh, cherry tomatoes and basil pasta. But if you have any questions, feel free to message me here on Instagram, wherever you want. Um, and yeah, I hope I hope this was informative. I tried to like give as many tips as I possibly could while presenting the products. So yeah, uh, that's that. Well, I hope you all have a very lovely day. Um, it's very hot here in New York. It is 91 degrees outside. So uh, I'm gonna stay inside for the rest of the day. But yeah, if anything, uh, I'll see you guys next week. And thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, bye-bye.